Hello, dear students. So, welcome back to the class of mathematics. So, in the last class, we have studied what we meant by hyperbolic function, and we have also uh, deduced some of the identities for hyperbolic function, and we have also seen the derivatives of these hyperbolic functions. So, since we know the derivative of all the hyperbolic function, we can differentiate the functions. Okay, so we will see example 5. Differentiate A is. So, I will take this to be a function y. Let y equal to sine h. So, it is a hyperbolic function 3x plus x cube. So, whenever h is there, you have to recognize that it is not the ordinary trigonometric function, but it is the hyperbolic function. So, you have to differentiate this with respect to x because here the uh, y is a function of x, x is the independent variable. Now, we can see that we know that what is the derivative of sin hx. We know that d by dx of sin hx is cos hx. This we have studied in the last class. But here instead of x, you have 3x plus x cube. So, you have a composite function. So, you must be remembering about the chain rule which we have studied in the first semester. So, we can either we can differentiate it directly or I will show you how to use the chain rule. If you remember it, what you have to do is you have to put u equal to 3x plus x cube. So, now y become sin hu. Okay. Now, we can differentiate with respect to u. So, actually we want dy by dx. So, this can be written as dy by du because now y is a function of u into du by dx. So, you can see that this is actually dy by dx. So, here we have used chain rule. So, I will mark it as equation 1. Now, what is dy by? We have y equal to sin hu implies dy by du, you are differentiating y with respect to u. So, the variable should be same. d by dx of sin hx is cos hx. So, here that is d by du of sin hu. So, the variables both are u. So, we can do it and here the answer will be cos hu. Now, next we have we have put u equal to 3x plus x cube. So, the, from here we can find what is du by dx. So, this is nothing but d by dx of 3x plus x cube. So, if you differentiate this, you can see derivative of 3x is 3 plus derivative of x cube is 3x square. Because you are differentiating with respect to x. Now we substitute in equation 1. So equation 1 implies dy by dx is equal to cos h u is there. But what is u? u is 3x plus x cube. So we will get cos h 3x plus x cube into dy, du by dx. So, du by dx is 3 plus 3x square. Okay. So, this is the angle and this is not the angle. So, this is, this is I can write this as 3 into 1 plus x square and cos h of 3x plus x cube. 3x plus x cube is in the angle. This is a multiple of it. Okay. So, this is the final answer. So, we have used here the chain rule. So, first problem is over. Now, we will do the second one. That is cos inverse of tan h.
So B, I will again take let y equal to cos sorry, it is cos inverse of tan hx tan hx you may get composite of trigonometric and hyperbolic function also okay so it is cos inverse of tan hx again we have a composite function here okay so i can put put u equal to tan hx okay so dy by dx so this implies y equal to cos inverse of u so dy by dx now become dy by du into du by dx now what is dy by du it is nothing but d by du of y is cos inverse of u okay and this is d by du of cos inverse of u this you have studied so this is nothing but minus 1 by root of 1 minus u square now here itself we can substitute for u again so what is u minus 1 by root of 1 minus u is tan hx so it is tan h square x and here so here uh, we have the hyperbolic function so for hyperbolic function we have the relation that tan h square x plus peak h square x equal to 1 this was in the pro first problem that I gave as an exercise 8.3 okay so I hope you would have proved this so from here we will get peak h square x equal to 1 minus tan x square x so here I have root of 1 minus tan x square x so this become minus 1 by peak hx because your square root is there we will get square root of peak h square x so it will be peak hx okay so we got dy by du now we have to find du by dx what is du by dx so it is d by dx of u is tan hx okay. d by dx of tan hx we know it is peak h square x peak h square x so we substitute in this equation so this implies dy by dx is equal to minus 1 by peak hx into peak h square x now again once peak hx will get cancelled so you will get minus peak hx so this is the answer Now we will see the third problem C. So let y equal to 3x by cos hx plus sin h3x. So, we have y equal to 3x by cos hx plus sin h3x. So, we, we have to find dy by dx. So, we can see that we can use the quotient rule here. So, this is by quotient rule we will have cos hx plus 
sin h 3x into derivative of 3x d by dx of 3x minus 3x into d by dx of cos hx plus sin h 3x whole divided by cos hx plus sin h 3x whole square. So here we have applied the quotient rule for differentiation. Now we have to keep in mind that when you are writing the derivative we have hyperbolic function here that we have to see. So this become cos hx plus sin h 3x into d by dx of 3x is 3 minus 3x into take bracket derivative of cos hx. So we know derivative of cos hx is sin hx minus sin is not there. But if you are doing ordinary uh, trigonometric function in trigonometric function minus sin is there. But in hyperbolic function derivative of cos hx is sin hx. Okay. Plus derivative of sin h3x. So derivative of sin h3x you can see that it is again a composite function. So d by dx of sin h3x. So uh, you will get it as derivative of three, uh, sin, h, sin h3x will be cos h3x. Into since it is a composite function multiplied by derivative of 3x. So it will be 3. So it will be 3 cos h3x. whole divided by cos hx plus sin h3x whole square. Now here for the simplification if you want you can do one or two steps also. No more simplification is possible because here we have 3 cos hx and here we have uh, x is there. Okay, so you can leave it as such. So in this way we can do many problems for differentiation. Only thing is that you have to remember uh, you have to remember the differentiation identities for hyperbolic function. Okay. Now, uh, let us study about the equation d square, d, d square x by dt square minus omega square x equal to 0. You have to remember this. The solution of this is a second degree. This is a second order ordinary differential equation. Second order or ordinary differential equation. Okay. So here x is the function of t. t is the independent variable. x is the dependent variable. Now d square x by dt square minus omega square x equal to 0. You have to remember that its solution is x equal to x naught cos h omega t plus mu naught by omega sin h omega t where x equal to x naught and dx by dt equal to mu naught when t equal to 0. So, these are the initial condition that is x at 0 you can see that. So, we have an equation d square x by dt square minus omega square x equal to 0. Now at t equal to 0, x is a function of t. So t equal to 0 means x at 0. x at 0, when t equal to 0, x is x naught. And dx by dt at t equal to 0 is mu naught. These two conditions are also there. Then the solution is of this form. You can see that when you put t equal to 0, sin 0 is 0, cos 0 is 1, so you will get x equal to x naught. 
Also, if you differentiate, you will get dx by dt. So, you can see that dx by dt is, when you differentiate this with respect to t, derivative of cos h is sin h, omega t, and this derivative of omega t will be omega. So, one omega will come here. So, omega x naught sin h omega t plus uh, nu naught, this omega will get cancelled, nu naught cos h omega t. And here if you put t equal to 0, the sin 0 0, this term becomes 0, cos 0 is 1, so you will get dx by dt at t equal to 0 is nu naught. So these two conditions are satisfied. Now, if this is the solution of this differential equation, then this should satisfy this ordinary differential equation. That is, if you differentiate this twice, to differentiate this twice, you should you should get this ODE. Then we will say that this is a solution. So let us differentiate this twice. So here we have differentiated it once. We got like this. Now again differentiate, uh, differentiating again equation 1. We differentiate again equation 1. So we will get the second derivative d square x by dt square equal to omega square x naught cos h omega t plus omega naught sin h omega t. And uh, we can see that if you take omega square outside from here, if you take omega square outside, this becomes x naught cos h omega t plus nu naught by omega sin h omega t. So this is nothing but omega square x. So we got d square x by dt square is equal to omega square x which implies d square x by dt square minus omega square x equal to 0. It means that this is the solution of this ODE. Okay. So, the main thing you have to do is remember this formula. Now, we will do a problem regarding this. Solve for f of t equal to f double dash minus 3f equal to 0, f is 0 equal to 1, f dash is 0 equal to minus 2. Now, this is like the previous problem. Here, f is a function of t and <coughs> the equation given here is second derivative of f d square f by dt square minus 3f equal to 0. Okay. So, in, in the previous twist and the condition here given is fx0 is 1, fx0 is 1 and f dash is 0 equal to minus 2. So, earlier we have studied the formula where we had d square x by dt square minus omega square x equal to 0. And here, there we had x at 0, when t equal to 0, x at 0 equal to x naught and x dash at 0 equal to mu naught. This, this thing we have studied right now. Okay. So, when you compare it, you can see that instead of x, you have f here and instead of omega square, you have 3 here. Okay. So, we conclude that omega equal to root 3. And instead of x naught, you have 1. And instead of nu naught, you have minus 2. Okay. So, you can relate like this. So, x naught is 1 and nu naught is minus 2. So, in the uh, last section, we studied that the solution is x equal to x naught cos omega t plus nu naught by omega sin cos h is there. h omega t plus nu naught by omega sin h omega t. That is the value of x. 
that we have studied. This is the solution of this. Now to write the solution. So what will be the solution? So here x was the solution. Here instead of x you have f. So here solution will be f which is a function of t. So f of t equal to x naught. Here we have x naught equal to 1. So it is 1 cos h omega is equal to root 3. So we have root 3 t plus nu naught. Nu naught is minus 2. So we have minus 2 by omega is again root 3 sin h omega is root 3 t. Okay. So this is the solution that is cos h root 3 t minus 2 by root 3 sin h root 3 t. So if you remember this you can write the solution. You have to remember this equation, its solution and also this condition. Then we can do any problem. We have to just be uh, use this formula here directly. Okay. Example 8. Prove that cos hx has a minimum value of 1 at x equal to 0. So we have to show that the minimum value of cos hx is attained at x equal to 0. And that minimum value is 1. So we will take let y equal to cos hx. And uh, you must have studied in your first semester classes that uh, the function at the point at which the minimum or maximum value is attained, they are the first derivative dy by dx is 0. And since the minimum, since it is attaining minimum value, the second derivative d square by dx square should be positive. So this is called the second derivative test. Second derivative test. So using this test, we will prove here that cos hx has minimum value of 1 at x equal to 0. So we will find the first derivative first. So dy by dx equal to sin hx. Now dy by dx is equal to 0 implies. So we have to take first derivative equal to 0. dy by dx equal to 0 implies sin hx equal to 0. Now what is sin hx? Sin hx is defined as e raised to x. Minus e raised to minus x by 2 equal to 0. This implies e raised to x minus e raised to minus x should be equal to 0. That is e raised to x equal to e raised to minus x. So multiply with e raised to x. So you will get e raised to x into e raised to x. Here you have e raised to minus x into e raised to x. So it is e raised to 0 which is 1. So here we get LHS is e raised to 2x. So e raised to 2x equal to 1. We know that the exponential function takes the value 1 at x equal to 0. So this implies that x equal to 0. So dy by dx equal to 0 implies x equal to 0. So x equal to 0 is the critical point here. Now we will see the, uh, we will see the second derivative of the function y. So d square y by dx square is equal to d by dx of the first derivative that is sin hx. So it is cos hx and at x equal to 0. d square y by dx square at x equal to 0 is 1 and this is positive. So it means that cos hx has a minimum value at x equal to 0 and that minimum value is also 1. Now you can see the graphs also. So here we have the graph of sin hx. At 0 it takes the value 0 and then it increases like this. Here we have cos hx, then tan hx, cosec hx, tec hx and cot hx. So you can compare this with the graphs of trigonometric function and you can see the differences. 
Now, since we know the derivative, we can also write the antiderivative. So, anti-differentiation formula for hyperbolic function. So, we know that d by dx of sin hx is cos hx. So, anti-differentiation or anti-derivative, we have studied this in detail in our first semester. Okay. So, this implies that the anti-derivative of cos hx is sin hx. So, we write it as integral cos hx dx is equal to sin hx plus c. Since this is not a definite integral, it is an indefinite integral because limits are not there. So, integral cos hx dx is sin hx plus c. So, in the similar way, we can write the that integral sin hx dx will be cos hx plus c. Integral c square hx is tan hx plus c. Integral cosec h square x dx is minus cot hx plus c. Integral sec hx tan hx dx is minus sec hx plus c. And integral cosec hx cot hx dx is minus cosec hx plus c. So here also you can see that in the first three terms the sign is positive and the remaining three terms the sign is negative as was in the case of differentiation. So uh, using this uh, we can find the do the problems of integrations also. So we will see example 9. We will do the first problem. Integral sin h3x plus x cube dx. So we know that sum of the inter integration of the sum is sum of the integration. So we can write this as integral sin h3x dx plus integral x cube dx. Now, again you have to use the um, chain rule here. So, since we are doing integration, since we are doing here integration, instead of multiplication here you will have division. Okay. So, integral sin h3x will be Integral sin h x, uh, integral of sin h x is we know it is cos h 3 x. Then you have to divide by the derivative of 3 x since we are doing integration. Okay. So, integration uh, you have to divide by the different derivative of 3 x. You have to divide it. So, derivative of 3 x is 3. So, you will get 1 by 3. So, this is actually 1 by 3 cos h3x. So, uh, integral of sin h3x is cos h3x. Then, since it is integration, while in differentiation you multiply with the derivative of 3x. But in integration you have to divide by the derivative of 3x. Okay. So, here you can see that you can also write it directly. Integral of sin h3x will be cos h3x. Now, 3x is a composite function. So, divide by its derivative. Derivative of 3x is 3. So, 1 by 3. Plus, integral x cube dx is x raised to 4 by 4. Plus, c will be there. Okay. So uh, this much is over, the remaining problem we will do in the next class.